Brad and Louise, hello. Hello, Mike. Hello, Michael. Hello there. How how are you how are you holding up? We're on the final day of South by Southwest. How are you feeling, Brad? I'm sad that it's over. I know. Because I just I just want them to keep feeding me good films because that seems to be their modus operandi this year. It's just all hits, no misses. Good stuff, right? Louise, how have you found it? Yeah, it's been amazing. Genuinely, mm-hmm. I've been to the point where I've been excited about what I'm going to watch, which hasn't often happened for some festival viewings. It's been a case of, oh, no, I know what's coming. But no, it's been so nice to go into them as well and not know anything about them other than the fact that I had to watch them and then they were wonderful. So I've got, who, yeah. who out there would like to pay for the three of us to fly to Texas next year to cover the festival? That's what I'd like to know. That would be nice. It's worth a beg. Yes, please, <laughs> <worth a> please. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got uh, four films to cover. Well, three films and a TV show, actually. So why don't we start with the TV show? Because that's a, a little bit different. That was quite nice to to check out. So uh, South by Southwest basically premiered the first two episodes, right, of a new series called Them. Uh, this is a series. It's going to be on Amazon Prime. It was created by Little Marvin. Um, and the synopsis is very brief. It says that Them is a limited anthology series that explores terror in America. Louise, what did you think of the first two episodes of Them? I found Them ultimately, I think you text me the word harrowing and it's not really left my head. It's yeah. it's very intense. It's scary in the sense of what's actually much scarier than things that go bump in the night are things outside of your control. And obviously it's about this family who in the 1950s travel from the, the South to California to a very <laughs> Stepford wife, wives-esque pastel coloured pastiche of utter whiteness. Yes. And this black family are just there's a the horror of what we're experiencing is not nastiness and horrible ghosts it's the the horrific nature of white supremacy in the 50s in america which obviously hasn't hasn't changed massively but not yeah. i think it's um it's very interesting because obviously it is it's running a suburban narrative <laughs> but also massive racial inequality and also a ghost story at the same time. Yeah. But none of those, th- I mean, of all of those things, it is the horrific racism that is front and centre and truly, a, really uncomfortable and appalling to watch. Yeah, really uh, unflinching, isn't it? It's quite harrowing. Brad, how did you find it? You know that I'm not much of a TV watcher either. Yeah. Don't watch short films, don't watch TV. I don't know what I do in my life, frankly. You're um, such a purist. You're like Chris Nolan or something, aren't you? I'm just like, right. cinema is the only cinema. true form of art, <laughs> art form. But I loved the first two episodes of them mm-hmm. because there is nothing more terrifying than man's inhumanity to man. And, and looking at this, we're not that far removed. It's only 60 years ago that we're looking at this, the, the, these true at representations and accurate portrayals of the absolute hatred and intolerance that people have towards another person just because of the color of their skin. Uh, there's the series, as you say, is unflinching and shows you things that are truly, truly hard to stomach and hard to watch. Mm. Um, the scene, particularly in the second episode in the uh, school. It's horrific. Yeah. Was awful i was watching it this morning and uh i just i couldn't i I'd want it, i wanted i couldn't wait for it to be over and it seemed yeah. like it was never ending and yeah. i guess that's a great sort of portray, you know a representation of, of racism in america and in the world in general this isn't just an american issue it's a very much fundamentally world issue of racism um never shies away and never, it, isn't, it doesn't seem like it's ever going to relent and all I want is it for it to fucking stop you like it's crazy cut. you want a cut yeah. and it doesn't come it just yeah. doesn't come in, yeah. in in life and in this series I want a cut I don't want yeah. it anymore <laughs> it doesn't uh, it doesn't go easy on us right and like I think that's really important I kind of love that it's as unflinching as it is but it will be a tough watch for some people i think because it is because it looks super glossy doesn't it? it looks beautiful like louise to look at i kind of initially thought oh this is going to be a bit like an american horror story almost like a bit a bit gloss and camp almost but yeah. it, it actually i think it's a bit smarter maybe I, dare i, I say than american horror story i think it's a lot smarter than yeah. american horror story but we've got um from americans to horror story we've got alison pill who yes. plays the most horrifically evil a Stepford wife of whiteness that wants to rid her neighbourhood because it's hers. And it's this mm. idea of, she's got this idea of sort of suburban decay is happening and people are coming to her land and all this. It's really, it's it's 
deep, it's very, very effective. And the, all of the performances in it are wonderful so far. Like, I've yeah. been totally captivated. Yeah, I loved it. I can't wait to watch the rest of it. So Brad, as, a, as not much of a TV watcher, are you going to continue watching this when it's on Prime? I will finish it. Yeah. There you go. So if there is, if that's the biggest endorsement I could give. I, I love <laughs> so. it. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's an anthology series. That's how it's described. So I'm guessing this is the first in maybe many seasons of de- telling different stories like this. Well, they said that this one's covenant, isn't it? Because of the covenants that were written into the deeds of houses. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what this is. But they said, so they wanted to focus on house ownership for this uh-huh. one. But they were very much about it to will be this one. So there's going to be future series. The, when, the minute they say anthology, you're suddenly like, how many series have you got planned? And I cannot yeah. wait for all of them if they stay to this. If they stay to, like this, it's great. Yeah, agreed. Uh, so there you go. So that is something that people will be able to check out, right? Um, have we got a release date yet? Do we know for... It's in um, April. Yeah. April 9th, I think. It was 9th. For the US, in a way. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not long to wait. So that's definitely worth everyone checking out. So that was them. Okay. Let's move on to a film then. So this is ooh, another tough film to watch. This was called Violation. Um, it's directed by and starring Madeline Sims Fewer. It's also directed by Dusty Man. Mancinelli, uh, a troubled woman on the edge of divorce returns home to her younger sister after years apart. But when her sister and brother-in-law betray her trust, she embarks on a vicious crusade of revenge. Um, Louise, I'm going to come to you again first. Uh, what did you think of Violation? I think we've got to be clear when we say that betray of trust, that this is I've got to be clear that this is a rape revenge movie. Um, Betrayal of Trust in that synopsis, this is a rape revenge movie, but it's a very, very different rape revenge movie. And it's a very different, even compared to something like Coralie Fargate's Revenge, which is very neon synthy and high, like high art, high concept, high speed synth. This is more about, this is about trauma and being disbelieved and relationships and things being awful even once you've done the revenge and it's very clever because it's all kind of out of order which is the sort of order of a sort of I suppose a, tra- a traumatized mind quite understandably mm. um and it is you almost you feel every part of this movie quite intensely and i i'm not going to i think enjoyment is a hard word to say but i i found it very effective i found it very entertaining um i've found it by the end it had a a conclusion that I enjoyed what I didn't particularly love all the time was the kind of flitting around of time which I didn't feel like was particularly handled as well because some of the scenes you could see were at different times because there was a slightly different colour palette but I would prefer that had been continued to be used so that I could actually identify what was happening in the past and the present because I actually watched quite a lot of it twice um, to just kind of work out how it was working um but it was i mean it was searingly horrible to watch at points um and also uh, very very unflinching as well and not doesn't shy away from the nastiness of the the creation of the revenge but the nastiness of the revenge as well Mm. which was all of it was pretty horrific really i mean how did that feel to watch for you guys (laughs) <laughs> pretty uncomfortable right brad not great <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um it is a tough watch isn't it again and brad i mean we talked together on patreon about another sort of uh you know a rape revenge film told in sort of reverse order right with irreversible and that the way that that was quite effective in the way that chronology kind of jumped around how did you find this in the way that this story was told did you think it w- was well, effective? Uh, violation is meant to make males feel uncomfortable, I think. Yeah. I think the intention is that, I mean, I certainly, you you and I both certainly feel very, I felt awful watching it. Like I felt so bad. And the chronology of the film it is a bit muddled at times and it does make things a bit difficult, but I think that's an accurate representation of what a mind state would be once you've had this trauma occur to you. Yeah. So I don't necessarily fault the film for it, even if it makes it a bit tougher to kind of um, follow the narrative threads that are occurring. And is this the past? Is this the future? Is this mm. the, you know, is this the present or what I find is so ingenious about this film is the, the, the casualty that, the act is portrayed in I mean, obviously i can't speak for everyone but it feels like a more true depiction of what that act would be like in a contemporary setting because they say you know a lot of the times your rapist is someone that you know 
it's nine times out of ten it's a friend a family member a, you know a partner um and i feel like the portrayal of that horrible fucking scene is so well constructed that it's not it's not gratuitous in any way, but it makes you feel sick because you just mm. want it to stop. And it's, it's so, it, it feels so authentic and so true. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like it just really deeply, deeply affected me so that when the catharsis comes, even though the catharsis is some before some after, yes. it's totally justified in my opinion. And, and it's really, you know, you, we talk about the male gaze it's completely subverted in this film in, in, yeah. in the, yeah. in, in, in the truest of sense. And I kind of applaud the film for that because it's such a refreshing take on a rape revenge movie. Yeah. I, it can't have been a difficult, it can't have been an easy film to make, to film like these actors all did an amazing job, I think, because it's pretty brave. It's a brave story. It's brave performances all round, isn't it? I think um, particularly Madeline Sims Fewer, who directed it and starred in it as well. She did an amazing job, I think. She was incredible. It was a lot of closeness to her. The, yeah. it, there were no very few sort of there were very few long shots everything was intense and in your face and especially the scene you're talking about Brad was very much about moments and areas and skin and hair and yes. it was very it, for all those reasons it was very very evocative and then I suppose the, the revenge is all the more cathartic um, for its unflinching depiction as well um, it's, in many it's, ways it's been really interesting, hasn't it? How many, like, sort of this this decade, we've had a lot of rape revenge films made by women, you know, that, that uh, such a kind of controversial subgenre, if you even want to call it that, that was so dominated by men and had that kind of slightly more scuzzy vibe in the 70s, right? And now with movies like The Nightingale and uh, Revenge and this, I think it's, uh, it's, it's definitely sort of very much lending a different perspective, isn't it? Which I think yeah. is really important, yeah. I think they're reclaiming it. Yeah, absolutely. It's their story to tell, not a man's. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, exactly. And that's that's and they I think they they do such a good job with this. Um so there you go. So that was violation. Um and that's coming to Shudder, I believe. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Very soon. Good I luck, think. guys. Very good luck. soon. So everyone will be able to enjoy that one in the comfort of their own home. So there you go. So that was violation. Okay, let's move on to Sound of Violence. I'm looking forward to this discussion. Uh, so this is directed by Alex Neuer, uh, stars Jasmine Savoy Brown, and it's about a young girl. Uh, recovers her hearing and gains synthesthetic abilities during the brutal murder of her family. Finding solace in the sounds of bodily harm as an adult, she pursues a career in music, composing her masterpiece through gruesome murders. What a strange premise. So this is deaf girl regains her hearing but sort of gets this weird sensation to the sounds of violent happenings, right? And, and then starts goes on a murder spree because she kind of loves this sensation that it gives her um uh, brad actually let me start with you what did you think of sound of violence um hmm. i like aspects of it mm -hmm. um but i didn't love it personally yeah um it's it's such an odd beast and I, I applaud its um ingenuity and i i think you know th there is something about sound and sensation that transcends your ears you know you've been in a, a club before or been somewhere and you can feel the beat in your chest you can feel sound and i i, I kind of like that idea um and how it's been explored but then when it gets into these silly saw traps <laughs> Yeah. Because, I mean, the, the thing is, the, the plot synopsis has just told you literally the entire movie. Mm -hmm. So I'm not spoiling that. But, but the, the, the contraptions she makes are a bit silly. The, the second one is brilliant with the singer in the recording booth. It's incredible. Loved yeah. that scene. Um, uh, there's a scene involving a harp, which I kind of... Oh, the harp oh, was uh, unbelievable. That, that was a was great good. set piece. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the music body horror is quite cool. In that, you know, can we call it... Can, oh, can we call it sonosthesia? Oh, nice. I like it. Nice. <laughs> nice. My, my tagline would be for this film, Last night a DJ took my life. <laughs> nice. Yeah, exactly. Can, can exactly. only be sung as well. Um, yeah. Louise, <laughs> what about you? You were a fan of this, right? Yeah, I enjoyed it in a really mm -hmm. weird way. I really enjoyed Initially, um, I was saying to you, Mike, I thought the start was really brutally, nastily, horribly violent. Yeah. Um, because there was like a meat hammer involved and I wasn't quite... It was quite prolonged as well, mm -hmm. the series of violence. But then... 
I kind of got on board when she was suddenly went from zero to homeless man murder. I was like, yeah. okay, so that's what you're doing here. That's what you're going to do. You're going to do all kinds of ridiculous things. And I thought it was beautiful. And I really enjoyed the relationship that she had with her flatmate. I mm-hmm. loved that relationship because, you know, I think sometimes when you watch movies, you're just like, kiss, kiss, kiss. Mm-hmm. And they were, <laughs> you know, yeah. they were in that kind of interesting relationship that, you know, called each other babe and they were flatmates and all the rest of it. But I found it, I found that part of it actually really sweet. And I really they had enjoyed chemistry. didn't they? Yeah. yeah. And I, yeah. I really enjoyed the silly traps in a weird way, because at that point I'd realized it was saw yeah. and suddenly beautifully shot, not green, new metal saw with kind of a cool synth pounding soundtrack and one of the weirdest concluding scenes that I think I've seen in a long time, but with a beautiful sunset, I kind of felt like while it was a series of weird disconnected parts, I I liked it. Like I was, I was in actively finding myself enjoying it and kind of surprising myself with that because I found it beautiful. It's really watchable, isn't it? Definitely. Like it, it, it's vibrant and it's colourful and the performances are really good. I think Jasmine Savoy Brown is excellent. Yeah, she's Uh, amazing. And the idea of it is cool. Like I like the idea of, this story but i i found it a bit awkward and clunky and jarring at times and i think like you say it goes from that re- very heavy quite earnest opening scene with this sort of v- yeah. extreme violence and domestic abuse into this yeah like we've talked about saw traps with like, turning people into drum machines and and like i don't know i found it a very weird sort of tonal mix i think that I just struggled to get on board with, I think. I was sort of not really sure what this film was trying to do. I don't know if it says some quite questionable things about trauma and stuff as well, but maybe also I'm I'm thinking too much into it because at the end of the day it's 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 like a it's a slasher film, basically. Yeah, isn't it, I really? think I think that's interesting because I think <sighs> why do we have to read into it badly for trauma if we are allowed all these male serial killers that we're quite happy to watch saw people up? I think that's the thing there. And that's why it's like, we should we be questioning this because it's a woman? And it's like, yeah, but I've watched a dude do this for ages. And at no point did I, did I feel like it was a terrible thing about trauma, but at the same time, because of that first scene and because of the way it was shot and its tone, you're like, is that what it's going for? And if that's what it's going for, it can get in the sea. But Mm. otherwise, I kind of just rolled with it. And it was before nine in the morning that I watched the first hour, which felt like something special. And I think maybe you're right. Maybe for me, it was the opening scene that threw me off because I was like, I was very ready for it to be a certain film with a certain tone. And then it just entirely wasn't after that, I think. Um, also, the cop in it was terrible. She was terrible. Yeah. yeah. And there's some, there was some odd, there's some odd dialogue and stuff as well. It's just, a, it's just a very strange film, I think. Um, but I kind of admire how like silly... Yeah, it yeah. gets like and and how it kind of swings for the fences. It's got this concept, and the concept itself is quite interesting and 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 fun. And then just goes well, fuck it. Should we just make people's heads explode? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. exactly. And like it's totally watchable. Like it is really fun. It zips along. It looks great. It's clearly got some money behind it. I think hasn't it? It's mm. like it feels yeah. like a proper. It's gl- it's gloss. You know, it's got a gloss to it. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so there you go so that was the sound of violence and we're going to finish with the spine of night uh, now Louise you didn't have a chance to, I can, to, I can, to sit watch. I yeah. can drink tea you can drink tea you didn't get time to watch this one so um, Brad we'll quickly cover this before we wrap up uh, this was um, this is an animated film directed by Philip Gillat and Morgan Galen a, a huge cast uh, of voice uh, performances Richard E. Grant Lucy Lawless Patton Oswald, Betty Gabriel Larry Fessenden again among other people uh, so the plot synopsis in this ultra-violent fantasy epic ancient dark magic falls into sinister hands and unleashes ages of suffering onto mankind a group of heroes from different eras and cultures must band together in order to defeat it at all costs um brad tell us what do you think of the spine of night it's not for me <laughs> and, and that is not um that is not an indictment on the film I don't like fantasy films. I don't yeah. get anything out of them. Um, the film is very, it, it looks aesthetically and thematically very close to heavy metal from the 1980s. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also Dungeons and Dragons and Visionaries and the kind of Saturday morning kids cartoons. Yeah, that Thundercats. We, yeah, Thundercats <laughs> that we grew up with watching, yeah. except there's loads of tits and dicks in it. Mm-hmm. Um, the plot itself, everyone's after a fucking flower. Um, 
a magical flower. There's a magical flower, and knights, and all kinds. Yeah, and yeah. spells, and people get. I mean, the, some of the gore and viscera that's drawn in this is is pretty impressive. Some people get absolutely fucked up in this film, um, and it's kind of fun um if you if you like that sort of thing yeah but i don't so yeah i sat through the whole thing and was just like this i can appreciate this and i'm sure there is a huge market for this and i think a lot of people will find this really refreshing and interesting but i don't yeah i'm right there with you i think it's a shame really that none of us really here are big fans of this because louise i know you haven't seen it but you're not a huge fan either right of kind of this sort of fantasy animation epic type stuff no um i'm i'm the same like i think this movie looks stunning i think clearly like the, the animation is beautiful there's some cool stuff like you said there's lots of gore and you know but nothing about the story really compelled me i've got to say like i kind of I found it a bit confusing as well. Like, I didn't really know what was going on by the final act. But, like you say, fans of films like Heavy Metal and just the fans of that kind of genre and that kind of animation, I think will love it, right? Because it looks quite great for that sort of thing. Yeah, if you like that sort of thing. Just not for us. Just, just not, not for, for us. us. I mean, we applaud, we applaud the, um, the diversity, though, however. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, it's, it's you, cool. When do you yeah. see a 90-minute swashbuckling fantasy epic completely rotoscoped and hand-drawn and no CGI and harking exactly. back to, like, 80s as fuck? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the impressive. screens look amazing from it. Like, yeah, it, yeah, it looks stunning. Yeah, exactly. It'll go it's on many just, T-shirts. We're 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 more into you know Welsh dinner parties or you know Messiah of Evil exactly. maggot licking. <laughs> yeah, maggot licking exactly. Um, so there you go. So that was it. That was our final movie to discuss uh, at South by Southwest. Um, oh, it's been amazing. I'm going to ask you this difficult question now. Uh, what's been your pick of the whole festival? Do you have a favourite oh. movie of the whole lineup? Broadcast signal intrusion. Yeah, God, you know, it's been so long, it feels like, since we talked about that, I almost forgot, but yeah. I, I want to watch it again, like, immediately. Me too. I'm hoping, I cannot I'm wait. hoping the link's still open. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I cannot wait to watch it again. Also, I really want the poster as well. As the poster looks amazing. I want, that, amazing. Fucking poster. I want uh, that fucking poster. <laughs> yeah, I've got, to, I've got to echo Brad. And I'll also, just to say something different, I'll also say The Feast as well um, for me. But what about you, Louise? Do you have a favourite of The Feast? Um... Oh gosh, it's almost like I've forgotten. So I love Jacob's wife a lot. I love mm-hmm. stuffed a lot. I like don't peek. I also I really liked off season as well. That was fun mm-hmm. because yeah, I like that one. Yeah. So I can't it's really hard to pick a favorite when everything feels really good and and really deserving, so deserving of and so different as well. I feel like I've been on real journeys at eight o'clock every morning with a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's yeah. been it's been an adventure, but yeah. I, I've loved it as well. And Brad, it's this lineup, right, that I just went through. I mean, that's it's kind of testament to how broad and great the genre is, right? Because look at all of those, like, how different all of those films are. It's, it's like a, a great programming. There literally yeah. is something for everyone in this, in this. And we said this from day one, like I was so excited to look at this program, even, even though I don't really read synopsis. I like to go into the films cold. I can yeah. tell that tonally these films are all very different beasts. And I wouldn't say, could you say that there are two films that are quite similar? I, I was just thinking that. I don't know if I could. No. Not really. Uh, not at all. No. They're very. They're very. I loved. I just loved the fact that you thought you knew what you were getting with all of them. But even the were even something like Gaia, which I didn't think followed through quite in the right way. I didn't know what was coming with it. I didn't mm. know which way it was going to go. And I feel like it was caught. Everything's been. You think you know the story, but you don't. And even if you do, we're going to be smart about it. And I think that's the lovely thing about horror is we understand how this genre works, and we're still being surprised. And that's yes. the best thing. That's the best thing about the genre. Definitely. Oh. Guys, it's been so... I mean, what a joy this has been. Thank you so much for joining lovely. me uh, on this on this little adventure. Uh, just tell us one more time where we can find you both. Where can people come and find you on social media, Louise? You can find me on Twitter at shiny underscore demon. Bradley? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at hadbranson and on Letterboxd at splatterpatter. Guys, thank you very much. Thank you. Looking for more horror content? Subscribe now for more videos like this one and listen to the Evolution of Horror podcast. Head on over to evolutionofhorror.com.